Y'all ready to sing? All right, let's go.
songbirds. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, enlightened glory. And four beautiful women. What can you ask for? Good morning, I'm Reverend Art Pat. I'm, I'm the staff minister here at the Center for Spiritual Living, Capistrano Valley. Everyone is welcome. You know, I heard, anyway, uh, welcome to the center. You know, whatever you may have said or done, you're welcome here. You know, any bad jokes you may have had, you're welcome here. Any uh, disagreements you had with significant others, you're welcome here. We are a transdenominational community, which means that we, uh, we support, honor, and recognize all religious beliefs. You know, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool because there's not one way to God. There's not one way to the highway. There's just the highway. So follow me, and I'm going back here. We're going to start off our little shindig with the uh, lighting the flames of faith, the call to service. We perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples, all faiths, all sentient beings come from one great universal presence, which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought an experience which we honor here today. Jill, we light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony, equilibrium, and the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and the practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by a sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as a path of love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring that path of compliance with the will of and the call of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as practitioner Jill lights that last candle, let it represent the path that brought you here today. And if you would join me for two minutes of sacred silence, you know, give. This is your opportunity to say, hi, God, I'm here. Talk to me.
staying in that sacred silence, knowing that I am one with the divine creator. I know that I am connected to source and the abundance of love, wisdom, and light is within. I know the same for each and every one here. Knowing as we open our hearts to change and growth, I know for each and every one of us, we are divinely guided. On this journey through the landscape of our minds and that the divine will help us release old patterns of past thinking that no longer serves us. Knowing our thoughts are influ infused with clarity and peace and that we may see the world through a lens of love and understanding. Knowing the God within will teach us to embrace new perspectives and to welcome the unknown with trust for our divine plan. May our mind be a vessel for truth and a place where fear and doubt are replaced by faith and certainty. Knowing we transform our thinking so it aligns with our higher purpose and may our thoughts reflect the light of God's presence within us. Understanding we have the courage to let go of limiting beliefs and to renew our minds with thoughts of abundance, joy, and peace. As we walk this path of change, let wisdom be our guide, let love be our companion. Knowing this is so, I release it into the law, and together we say, and so it is. And together we'll say the short version of our global vision. We see a world that works for all, where people live according to spiritual truth, where unity and connection are emphasized, where people have enough food, homes, and a sense of belonging, and where there is peace, harmony, and justice for all. Today's affirmation, repeat with me, please. I am a divine spiritual being, and so it is. All right, thank you, Jill. You know, I was before the service started, I was listening to this uh, smooth sound coming from the sanctuary. A really deep, smooth sound. So, please welcome Jim Higgins. couldn't resist. <laughs> when God is all God is 
Is I right about that voice? Don't you want to just hug this guy and go out with him? Woo! Uh, all right. James, that's outstanding. Outstanding. Well, our next surprise, our next treat, is this lady I got to sit next to d during Dr. Alice's uh, robing ceremony. And we started chatting. And then I, I thought that was the last time I was going to see her. But guess what? She's here today. And she has a resume that's really long, but I'm not going to do that. Reverend Dr. Amandra, that's you, <laughs> is a dynamic and dedicated interfaith minister and social worker with a profound commitment to cultural justice, spiritual and spiritual well-being. Her academic journey includes a master's degree from San Francisco State, 
University and a doctorate from New York Theology Seminary, providing a strong foundation for her for more than 25 year career dedicated to empowering children and families. She's also written a new book to be found in the back of the sanctuary. And the topic is the power of divine consciousness. You know what? I'm not going to read what it's about. I'm going to let her tell you what it's about. Dr. Ahangra. Good morning. Good morning. That's weak. Good morning. Good morning. That's better. <laughs> I just love the way God works in my life. So I have the pleasure of having Reverend Karen at CSL Carlsbad. That's where I'm from. And so we were talking one day, and she was like, you need to come up to my church. And I was like, okay, I can, I can. And not long ago, I just got this message from Spirit. You know how Spirit just downloads? You need to go up to San Clemente. I was like, okay. So I grabbed one of my friends, and we drove up here. And I walked into this love in this sanctuary. So powerful. And Reverend Alice and I were talking, and she was like, you know, I'm looking for a speaker that last week, August. And I was like, I think I can do that. And we figured it out. And here I am today. And it's a blessing. So I have these cheat sheets here because you know how ministers get. We get on these tangents and we don't stop, right? <laughs> but I also gave you something. When you walked in today, you got those what? Those look, look at mine. So where did these come from and why do you have them? I walked into my first CSL church 35 years ago in Oakland, California, and the minister was Reverend Eloise Oliver, and she had a Pentecostal background. Yeah. She took Pentecostal religion and CSL, spiritual, for living, well, at that time it was religious science, and she married him. So our church was rocking every Sunday. We had tambourines, we had choirs, we stomped, we chatted, we did everything. And so when I moved to Carlsbad and I walked into the church, you guys were so quiet. <laughs> I was the only one hopping and hollering and screaming and making noise. I was like, oh, okay. So when I became a minister and I went to the podium, I was like, I can't have all that quietness. So I bought the clappers and I gave them to my congregation. And they are to clap when they hear anything that resonates with them. So if you got a clapper, clap when it resonates with you. Now, you can't take them home. You have to return them before you leave. So right now today, this message is a message that you already know, the power of divine connection. We live inside of it. You know that message. But what I'm going to do today, I'm going to bring it back to us, and I'm going to put it inside of today's time and what we're living in today. I want you to help me out right now. I'm going to ask you on the count of three, you're going to turn to the person on your left and you're going to say, we are divinely correct, connected. Then you'll turn to the person on your right and you'll say, we are divinely connected. And then together we're going to put our arms over our heart chakra and we are going to say, I am divinely connected. Okay. One, two, three. To the left, we are divinely connected. To the right, we are divinely connected. And to ourselves, I am divinely connected. So what that means is that we live inside of a powerful energy, and we know that. That energy is created. It's everywhere. It is the energy of life. It's the energy of love. And our beliefs understand and know that. But even we sometimes forget. We forget that what's running through each and every one of us is this energy that connects us. There is no separation between me and thee. There just is not. So today, I want to talk more about that. But I want to start out with this magnificent body. We have this magnificent body. And inside of this body are these amazing things called cells. Now, I need to make sure I get the, the right amount of 
number here. After researching 1,500 pages, science came up with the fact that the male body has 36 trillion cells and the female body has 28 trillion cells. Now, I take offense with that, of course, okay? <laughs> I know the researchers had to be male, okay? But the fact is, these cells in our body are intelligent. We don't even think about them. But they are constantly working, and they are working to keep this body working and moving and in harmony. The cells work together because they understand and know they are divinely connected. The toenail cell doesn't look up at the fingernail cell and say, I don't like you because you higher up than I am. <laughs> Thank you. Give me some clap here. Come on. <laughs> The cells of the liver don't get together and, and try to do harm to the cells of the kidney because they have similar functions. No, they all work together in harmony because they understand and know what their task is. Their task is to keep this magnificent body moving and working in harmony. Moving and grooving. I like that. Come here. <laughs> so... The thing with the body is this. The cells know their jobs. So you have sentinels. Remember the matrix? They had the sentinels, and the sentinels drove around. Well, the cells in our bodies, the sentinels, they're in their little cell cars, and they just drive around the body looking to make sure everything is in order. That is their job. They make sure that there's nothing inside of the body that should not be there. If you have surgery and you have something implanted in your body, what do they give you? They give you drugs to trick the sentinel cells into believing that whatever they left in your body is supposed to be there. Because the sentinel cells know, uh-uh, this is not supposed to be here. Stop taking those drugs and see what happened. You got a need that's not supposed to be there. The sentinel cells will say, hey, guys, come, take that out. There are also helper cells in the body. The sentinel cells may see something that's awry, and they call in the helper cells. Come, come on over here and help these cells out. They need some support. They need some assistance. Then you have the healer cells in the body, the immune system. They come in, and they create healing in the body. All this is going on in our body, and we don't even know. We don't even pay attention, but it's giving us life. All the time. The only time we pay attention if it's something goes awry. And then all of a sudden it's like, ah, oh, I need to go to the doctor. Now the doctors, their charge is to help the cells of the body. And they do. They give us a medication. Sometimes the medication creates other situations. But the cells of the body never, ever stop working. That's what they do. Give me a clap. The cells of your body know who you are. I studied for a year in Africa under Brother Ishmael Tete. Some of you might have heard of him. He goes to Agape a lot. And when I studied under him, I flew to Africa, and I have lupus, discoid lupus. And what that means is that the sun, my body reacts to the sun in a negative way. And the doctors told me in my 20s, you can never go to a hot climate. Well, Spirit said, you're moving to Ghana. Ghana's on the equator. You know, it's like, okay, I'm going. So I went to Ghana, and the 24 hours I was there, my whole body broke out in welts all over me. And he was like, what is that? And I told him, you know, I have lupus. He said, look, the cells of your body know your voice. He says, speak to your body. Let your body know it's okay. He said, when you speak, your vibration of your voice, the majority of it stays inside your body. Your cells know who you are. That night, I went home, and I laid down, and I was like, okay, body, I know it's 100 degrees here. I know the food is different. I know you don't know where we are, but we are okay. You are fine. Do you know? I kid you not. The next morning, every welt was gone. And I lived, excuse me, I lived in Ghana for a year. Never had an issue. Never had an issue. 
I had another friend call me one day, and he was telling me about this arm and how much trouble he was having. His arm was hurting him. And I said, look, your cells of your body know what to do. Assist them. Tell the cells in your body, go, and whatever is there, I want them to encase it and hold it and do not allow it to go anywhere else in your body. I'm going to hold that consciousness, and you hold that consciousness. Now, he's not inside of our belief system, but he trusts me. So the doctors were like, okay, you know, we're going to go in and we're going to see what's there. When they opened up his arm, they found this ball of stuff, this hard stuff. They didn't know what it was. They didn't know where it came from. All they know is they just scooped it out, took it out. The cells of his body knew what to do. They surrounded what was ever there and kept it and hold it in place until the doctors removed it. Now, we understand about healing. We know that our voice connecting with ourselves creates healing in our body. We do it all the time. Give me a clap, you guys. Yeah. So, okay. So this energy, this creative force, this, this amazing energy that runs through our body, it runs through every, everywhere, in other plants, in the universe. Science has finally caught up with what the mystics knew all along, that energetically we are all connected. The energy in the heart is so powerful, it goes out three feet from your body. So each of us are sitting inside of our heart energy. And if we stay together long enough, guess what? The hearts will start beating in rhythm. That's what they do. So now, if this body has all those cells, and they work together in harmony to keep us in peace and well-being. Guess what? The individual bodies make up the cells of the body of God. There are 8.1 billion human beings on the planet, and we are cells in the body of God, and we are divinely connected. And every other living entity, thank you, on this planet makes up the body of God. And guess what? We were given charge. We were given dominion to take care of all the cells in the body of God. We are the sentinels driving our cars, making sure that everything is happening and in well-being on this planet. That is our charge. That is what we are to do. We are divinely connected. Ernest Holmes says, the greatest power is the power of thought. We just think and things happen because of the energy. I don't know how many of you know of the Japanese scientist Emoto. He did experiments with water. He put water in bottles and just put labels on the bottles. Labels of peace, harmony, and love on one bottle. Labels of war and anger on the other bottle. And when he froze the water, the molecules of the, body, of those, of the water had responded to the words. The words weren't spoken. They were just written down. Now just think, our body is a high percentage of water. So if we surround ourselves with words and with language, that's uplifting and of love, it affects us in a powerful way, a positive way. And the opposite can happen. So if we are the sentinels, and it is our charge to take care of this amazing planet, unfortunately, we have forgotten what our charge is. And we are not living up to what we were charged to do. I want to give you a statistic here. This statistic really hurt my heart. 1970, humanity has wiped out 60% of mammals, birds, fish, and reptiles on the planet. A 60% decline in human beings would look like this. All of North America would be gone, South America, Africa, Europe, China, and Oceania. They'd be gone. We are not taking care of our planet. We have forgotten that we are connected, that everything we do impacts everything around us. And it is time for us 
to get back into understanding who we are and what it is we are charged to do and to just get back in harmony, okay? Now, the indigenous populations of this planet, they understand that. There are cultures out there that are doing just that right now, working in harmony. When I lived in Africa, one of the things Brother Ishmael would do would send me out to gather herbs because he also healed with herbs. And I would go out, but I'd have a little bag of tobacco with me. And when I would go out and the plant was identified that I was supposed to, to take, pick, I would bow down. I'd say a prayer. I would thank the plant for giving its life for me. I would thank the plant for the healing energy it had. And then I would gently remove it. I just snatch it up out of its home. I would gently remove it. And I would put it in a bag. And then I would take the tobacco and I would sprinkle it over the soil. It would be a gift, but it also helped the soil to begin to rejuvenate where I removed that plant from. That's respecting the fact that that plant and I, we're connected. And when that plant is ingested in this body, it's going to connect with the cells of this body and it's going to create a healing. That is how powerful the energy that flows between us is. That the plants and the animals around us and us, we're all interconnected. We all can help each other and work together. So what is there for us to do? Our task, three little words, it is time. In our life, when we hear those words, you know, sometimes a woman's getting ready to give birth. What do they say? It's time. It's time. Come, come. It's time. It's, it, they're almost here. Or when a person is making their transition, we get that call. And it says, you should come. It's time. What I say to each and every one of us, and I put myself inside of this too, it is time. It is time for us to remember who we are and to remember what it is we are to be doing. Why? Because right now we are living in such an exciting time. I tell individuals, don't be sad. Don't be afraid. We are inside of what I'm calling a spiritual paradigm shift. It's a spiritual climate change. It's been happening on the planet for 15 years. I've been feeling it. I've been feeling like Moses. No, no, not Moses. The one um, in the wilderness <laughs> that was crying out all the time. He's coming. He's coming. That's what I have been feeling like over these last 15 years. John, because I have been saying to people, there's a shift coming in our consciousness. Well, we're right now in the middle of it. And when anything shifts and changes, what happens first? Chaos. It chaos happens, and everything looks like it's bad, but it's not. The, all the stuff, the old patterns of behavior and thinking, they have to come to the surface so that the new ones can be birthed. And that is what's happening right now. Give me a clap on that. So what there is for us to do, those three little words, it is time. It is time for us to get on our vehicles and start moving around this planet and looking to see where we can be of assistance. There are no bad people. There are people who have just forgotten who they are. They are living in what I call spiritual ignorance. They don't realize they're divinely connected. And what there is for us to do is to begin to support them. Now, how do we do that? Whatever your gift is, each and every one of us in here has a special, unique gift. We just heard a powerful gift a few minutes ago. We have a gift, and it is our job to give that gift out. Now, some of us may say, well, I don't have anything. I don't sing. I don't speak. But you think, what did Ernest Holmes say? The most powerful thing on the universe is the power of thought. You can sit in your house and send out powerful thoughts into the universe. And they go into what? A race consciousness. My ministry is called Circle of Consciousness. 
It's this giant circle of consciousness, thoughts that are floating around. Now, this is the interesting thing. This is so funny. We are walking around with these amazing brains, these minds. It's like having a Bluetooth that is not password protected. <laughs> Come on now. Now, you know for a fact, everybody tries to protect their Bluetooth, make sure it's password protected. Why? So that somebody else doesn't walk up next to you, right? And your device connects with it, and then it just starts downloading information into your device that you don't want. So how come our minds aren't Bluetooth protected? Because we don't believe that our minds are just picking up thoughts that are out there floating around, and they're impacting us. They're helping us to stay in spiritual ignorance. Right now, I get phone calls because you know who's this beautiful black woman is running for president. I get these calls from African-American women, and they're all concerned. And I say, stop, stop. Send out what you want to happen into the world. Use your thoughts. Don't use those words. Leave those words out of your vocabulary. Send out your thoughts. So each and every one of us, we are charged to do whatever it is you are to do to bring our whole consciousness to the next level. We are inside of a spiritual climate change. So I'm going to be wrapping up now because I want you to know whatever it is for you to do, it is time for you to step up and do it. During COVID, I received the charge from Spirit to write a book. I'm like, I don't want to write a book. No, you're going to write a book. The book was me putting my story of, of transformation and healing out into the world so that others could read my story. But also, I didn't know it at the time, it was also to bridge a gap between African-American women and women of non-African descent because false narratives have us separated. We don't understand each other. So my book now has become a bridge. So I'm using my talent, and I didn't even realize how that talent was going to be used in that book. But I wrote it. What is spirit telling you to do? What is it that you've been resisting? Sit quietly and listen. Whatever it is for you to do, it is time for you to stand up and do it because we are all divinely connected. And when you leave here today, I want you to remember the power of thought is the most powerful thing on this planet. Use your thoughts. Don't waste them. And talk to the cells of your body. Tell your liver, I love you, liver. Tell your spleen, I love you, spleen. I don't know what you do, but I love you anyway. <laughs> I invite you to get a book if you want to, but also... I want to share this with you, that spiritual, emotional intelligence is something that we vitally need. And in, after Labor Day, I am going to be actually holding a free workshop on spiritual, emotional intelligence. If you'd like to receive an invitation, I have my iPad in the back. You can give me your email. I'll send you an invitation. It is time for us to come together. It's us, you guys. It's us. We are already inside of the consciousness. Let's send it out into the world and help all of those who are still living in darkness. I want to add a blessing to these words and a blessing to each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, that was worth it. <laughs> well worth the wait. And now it's time for the golden voice of James Higgins. That was really good. Thank you. Look for the beauty in the world around you. Don't look for 
gray skies when the sun is shining don't close your eyes or you will miss that silver lining through happy eyes and sunlit skies the beauty's up to you Walking tall and love is easy When truth surrounds you There's no need for darkness When God's love light is shining Don't close your eyes You'll miss that silver lining Through happy eyes in sunlit skies, the beauty's up to you. God break you open, feel his arms around you. There's no need for darkness when God's love light is shining. Don't close your eyes, you'll miss that silver lining. Sunlit skies, the beauty's up to you. Just look for the beauty of the world around you. Don't you look for gray skies when the sun is shining. Don't close your eyes. You'll miss that sun. up to you walking tall and love is easy when truth surrounds you there's no need for darkness when God's love light is shining don't close your eyes you'll miss that silver Thank you. Pagan. Woo! All right. Hey. Guess what? It's time for our giving. <laughs> oh.
I looked at a startled face on there. So, um, can we have the ushers come forward? This is our time to give. And, uh, and if this is your time to give this Sunday, that is fantastic. If it's not time for you to give, there is a prosperity, oh, that one, okay. There's a card that you can read that says, my, accept, my offering is my acceptance of God as a source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply. The abundant flow of God, God is, I am everything. say thank you, God, for the opportunity to be blessed, to give, and to receive. And so it is. Thank you. And, oh, by the way, um, I want to thank these incredible guys here. The band. And I want to thank the songbirds who were songing and singing up here earlier. Give them a big hand. And is there anyone here for the first time? If you're here, raise your hand. Oh, 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 somebody's pointing at somebody else. Okay. I know how that goes. We have a coupon for you in there, and if you take it to the bookstore and fill it out, you'll get a free gift. Um, there's first birthdays we're not doing now. Uh, who's in the service today? If you are in service for any reason, please stand up and bless these people. And if you are a practitioner today in service, that would be Cheryl Lyman, Jill, and who's the third one? Who's Faith the? Mackie. Faith Mackey, where is she? These beautiful women will transform your life and create a one minute miracle if you have any issues in your life that you want to get rid of. So talk to your body, say, body, this is where I'm at. They will help you see the truth. Okay. And then, um, I don't know, is it time for invitations? Mr. Clark, are you ready?
much. Don't blow all your enthusiasm in one shot. Try and pace yourself here. Uh, Conscious Connection will meet today after the membership meeting. We have two weekly yoga classes with instructor Mike Ward. One class is offered Monday evening from 6 to 7 p.m. and another class on Tuesday morning from 10 to 11 a.m. Kirtan chanting will take place again this Friday here at 6.30 p.m. August 30th is the date for the second annual Talent Showcase. If you would like to showcase your talent, and I know you're all talented somehow, then, and you have not signed up, you know, please do so today. We're also having a 50-50 opportunity drawing. So see Kathy's story has tickets for sale beginning today. Someone will have the opportunity to take home half of the amount of money that's gained from ticket sales. So you want to get some of those tickets. <laughs> what? Big money. Big money. Dr. Ellis will teach advanced conscious studies beginning this fall. This is a 27-week course taught in three nine-week sessions. She had considered waiting until January. However, the class is back on for the fall. Class begins Wednesday, September 25th. This is the first year of practitioner studies. However, anyone who has taken the prerequisite courses may take this class. If you are unsure, please talk to Dr. Alice about it. Now, here are some uh, weekly small group gatherings. Wednesdays with Mary, the book study is taking a break temporarily. She will be back soon, I understand. Wednesday evening, the meditation group with Dr. Christian Steele from B 6 to 8 p.m. Thursday morning at Shifting Sands, meeting from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. This gathering is in person or on Zoom. Friday morning, the support group with Joyce Fournier meets on Zoom at 8 a.m. The Zoom links for these activities are now easily found on our brand new Spiffy Diffy website, in our newsletters that are mailed every Monday and Friday, and in this colorful brochure in the lobby. And now a special announcement from Reverend Judy. Thank you, Clark. I'm standing up here not as your assistant minister, but as your, the president of the board of trustees. So after the service right now, I want you to go back and get yourself a nice sandwich. In five minutes, the board of uh, trustees and the finance committee will be up here and we're going to share some information with you our, with our, about our beloved sanctuary and our beloved uh, center. So I invite you to just Please stay, and it will just be a very short sharing uh, opportunity. So I'll see you soon. Thank you. And now? And now what? Oh, it's so where are the songbirds? There they come. Okay. Now the songbirds. <laughs> opportunity to be alive, to be in your world, and we are a part of your world. Thank you, God, for our consciousness and everyone here present. So we are the difference makers, and so it is. And so it is. <laughs>